Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I'm from IsraAutomation.com and today in this video I'll be talking about how we can set up a dynamic Selenium grid container via code with the help of test containers in c .net. Well, if you have heard about test containers, you know what I'm going to talk about. But before we jump into it, let's first of all talk about dynamic Selenium grid. If you remember, we talked about dynamic Selenium grid as a way to run the whole Selenium grid setup in the Docker containers. So basically, the Selenium hub the Selenium nodes, which is a Chrome node or a Firefox node or whatever node it is, it will be running in the Docker containers and the code that you pass in from the client code is going to be running into the Selenium grid code, which is going to be running in the Docker container. So basically, instead of running the whole setup in your local machine, the Selenium hub and node, you'll be running the Selenium hub and node in the Docker container. That's what is the dynamic Selenium grid. And the way we set up this whole dynamic Selenium grid is using the Docker Compose file, something like this. So you can see that there are a bunch of services and there is a Selenium hub as well as a part of service. So once you have the Selenium hub and then the relevant Selenium nodes, which is the Chrome Edge Firefox node. And also if you need a video support, you also need to add those video supported containers as well. And once you spin up the Docker Compose app, everything is going to start running up as a container in the Docker containers world. That's it. That's how the whole thing works. But the question is, how do we set up the throwaway containers via code instead of running the whole thing in the Docker compose file? That is the whole idea of this particular video. So if you heard about this test containers, test containers is a library to support the tests with throwaway instances of Docker container for all compatible .NET standard versions. And the library is built on the top of the .NET Docker Remote API and provides a lightweight implementation to support your test environment in all circumstances. This is super cool and very powerful. And if you already work with test containers, you'd have probably heard about the test containers, which I'm going to be talking about right now, which is this guy, the test containers.org. So if you just go to this test containers.org, this test containers is a Java library that supports the JUnit tests, providing a lightweight throwaway instance of common databases, Selenium web browsers, or anything else that can run in the Docker container. And this library is exclusively for the Java world. But there is also an implementation for the .NET, which is nothing but this one, the test containers .NET. Again, this is coming from the test containers itself, where you can see that they have this exact same implementation, but in the .NET world. And you can also see that they support both Windows as well as the Linux operating system containers and you can run them natively. And you can also see that these test containers uses the builder pattern where you can specify almost all the things that you really require to spin up and container like with image, with working directory, entry point, command, name, host name, environment, network, volume mount, bind mount, port binding, whatever you can think of to run a container and do the networking kind of stuff, you could do that much, much easily using this testcontainer.net. And you'll also notice that the test containers come pre-configured with some of the containers, as you can see here, but also you can create your own custom container. So at the moment, in the .NET world, they don't really have one for the Selenium as they do for the Java, as you can see here, they have the Selenium web browsers, something like this but that's not something available out of the box in the .NET world, but we can configure that much, much easily. That's why the scenario today is to see how we could able to spin up a Docker Selenium hub within our local machine and just connect a Firefox container or the Firefox node with the existing hub and see how we could able to run a Selenium test. So basically, as you can see over here, this particular Selenium Docker Compose file, as you can see over here, we are going to strip down it in a way that we are just going to run the Selenium Hub, in the Docker Compose file, but we are going to spin up the Firefox node or the Chrome or Edge Chrome node from the code by connecting it to the Selenium Hub, which is running within our local machine. So let's see how we could able to do that. So in order to do that, I'm going to first copy this whole Docker Compose file and I'm going to paste it within my VS code, as you can see over here. But the whole idea, as I told you before, we are not going to run this whole containers like Chrome, Edge and Firefox. Rather, we're just going to run the Selenium hub alone in the Docker container, which is, which is nothing but within my local Docker container running in my local machine. And we are going to create this node, the Firefox node probably, within the code and we're going to spin it up within our code itself. Let's see how we could able to do that. 
So for doing it, first of all, we need to create a new project, which is going to be the .NET project. And I'm going to call this as Selenium Grid Test Container. And I'm going to use the type as X unit and language as C sharp, whatever it is. I'm just going to hit that. And it is going to be this particular project. And then I need to also add two dependencies. One is the test container dependency and the other one is the Selenium dependency. So I'm going to go search for test containers, which is this one. So I'm going to install that and then I'm going to install Selenium. So Selenium web driver, install that. So these are the two dependencies that, that I really require. And then I'm going to start writing the code. So in order to work with the test containers builder, we are going to write the code pretty much like how they have mentioned in the documentation over here, as you can see. There is this var test container builder is equal to new test container builder of the test containers container. So this is the one which you can use for the custom images, which is nothing but our Selenium Firefox node probably. So I'm going to say Firefox test container builder is equal to new of test containers builder. And over here, we are going to say test containers container. And then because it's a builder pattern, we can just use this with image method. Within this with image method, I'm going to paste the image, which I'm going to be basically spinning up. So if you just go into the, my VS code, so this is the image, the Firefox image, probably. So this is the one which I'm going to be connecting to my Selenium grid over here. I'm going to paste that. So this is the with image. And not only that, if you just go back to our Firefox container, you can see that it not only requires an image, but it also has some environments variable. And also it depends on Selenium Hub to be up and running. So the Selenium Hub is going to be anyways up and running because we are manually going to do it at the moment. But we're going to discuss it, how we can do it programmatically in our next video. But at the moment, you need to see that you need to set this environment variables. So the way we can set the environment variables in the code is using the with environments method. And this with environments method, if you can see, there are two overloaded method. One is the string of string that you can pass. So if you just go to the implementation, you can see here, they have the name and the value pair. Uh, or you can also pass using a dictionary, like an I read only dictionary of string of string as the environment. So we're going to use that dictionary part because as you can see, we have a lot of environment variables to be passed in. So now to do that, I'm going to do Firefox environment is equal to new dictionary of string of string. And I'm also going to use the key value pair to be passed in, which is going to be this one, right? So the first one is going to be the Selenium Hub. So I'm going to paste this. I see event bus and then the Selenium Hub. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it over here. Similarly, I also need to paste the uh, environment for the published port and the port, which is going to look something like this. So these are the environment variables that I really want. And then this environment, now I can pass it over here as the Firefox environment. That's it, right? And then I can do call this build method to complete this builder pattern method. And now I need to invoke this particular container. And the way I'm going to invoke this container is using this Firefox test container builder dot that is something called as start async. And because this is an async method, we also need to use the await keyword. If not, it's not going to work as expected. Uh, and because this is an await, you need to wrap this method within the task of nothing but the async of task. So now that our code is being done, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this Docker compose file. I'm going to get rid of these services because I'm just going to run the Selenium hub at the moment. And over here, you can see that I have my Docker desktop up and running. There is no container up and running at the moment. And I'm just going to say Docker compose of up, which means because this is the folder where this Docker compose is up and running. So I'm going to start this Docker compose. And you'll notice that it is going to run the Selenium hub for me. And if you go to the container, you can see that there is this Selenium hub. And within the Selenium hub, you can see that the Selenium hub has been started. Where you can also look at that Selenium hub started or not using the localhost colon 444. 
and you can see that at the moment there is no registered node available and that node is nothing but the code node that we are gonna spinning up which is this guy so once i call this start async method it should do the magics for me but while we do that this code is not really gonna work and i will tell you why it is not gonna work so if i do a debug at the moment and if i wait the test container is going to spin up once the start async method is gonna uh, work so if we just go back over here at the moment there is no container up and running and the moment it's going to call this start async method you will notice that there is going to be two containers coming up one is the test containers container and another one is the seriniums node firefox which is the container that we really want uh, but if you go inside this container you will see that there is going to be an exception coming up and it says that could not determine if the address selenium hub 442 is available or not and why is this happening well the reason why this is happening is because we have specified the se event bus host as selenium hub and if you want to communicate with this selenium hub you need to be in the same network and if you go to the docker compose file you see that this is the selenium hub and the container name is selenium hub so basically the way in docker compose world it works is you need to create the network and that is not there within our code over here and that's the reason why it is failing so this container cannot talk to the Selenium Hub container because they are in two different networks. So if you know Docker, you know what I'm talking about. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to add the network right now. So I'm going to say networks of EA underscore network. So I'm going to create a network called as EA network. And I'm going to say networks of EA network, something like that. So this is how you define the network basically. And once you do that, we can then stop this whole thing and I'm going to start the Docker Compose once again. But this time while I create it, you'll notice that it is going to create the... So basically, if you just go to the other tab and if you just do Docker Network LS, you will see that there is going to be a dynamic Selenium Grid EA network. So this is the network which has been created for me. And there is a network ID as well. I'm going to copy this network ID and I'm going to go to my code over here. Within this builder pattern, there is also a method called as with network. So this method is the one which I'm interested in. It's going to basically have two order method. One is the string of string. And this is the one which I want. I want to pass the ID of my network. And then I also need to pass the name of my network, which is nothing but this guy. So if I pass these two, then we are pretty good to go. And you will see what I'm really talking about. So if I do a debug this time, and if I run this, you will notice that the Docker container is still going to come up over here. But this time while it runs, you will notice that it says that the node has been added, which means now that the Firefox node is registered with the hub that we have. So even if you go to the hub, you'll notice that it says added node, blah, 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 something like that. And if I go to my local host over here, you see that? Now we have a Firefox node being added, which means we have managed to connect our throwaway container from the code to the Selenium hub that we have spinned up over here, which is great. And now the rest of the thing are quite straightforward. I mean, the rest of the operation that we're going to perform is going to be quite straightforward, just going to be on the Selenium world itself. So I'm going to stop this execution right now and I'm going to write a bit of Selenium code over here. So let's add the missing references. This is basically a remote web driver code. It's going to connect to the local host of 444. There's a Firefox option. It's going to work with the easami.com website. It's going to perform these operations. So let's see how we could be able to run this. So if I run this particular test this time, so what's going to basically happen is the test is going to spin up over here and you will see that the queue size is one, which means it is running a test in the Firefox browser for me over here. And in fact, it has executed so fast. So if you just go over here, you see that the test execution is going to probably complete. Let's see what's happening. Yeah, the execution is complete. And it took almost 20 seconds to complete the whole execution. So it spinned up and throw away container and then connected to the existing Selenium hub, executed the test over there, and then it again removed the whole test container that we really require. So this is how we can create a throwaway container using test container with the power of 
creating a throwaway container or something like this. But there is another catch right now. We have to spin up this particular selenium grid, something like this, as you can see over here manually. And then we have to also ensure that the network that we are talking about, which is this network, you can see that it's kind of it's kind of quite painful that we have to set up everything over here like manually. These are some of the pain points at the moment. So how do we overcome this problem? And how do we also add some other fancy things like support of videos and something like that? How do we do all these things? We are going to be discussing that in our next video where we are going to spin up the Selenium Hub containers and also the video support, everything including the network within our code instead of even running this Docker Compose file as you can see over here.